Introduction It was in September 1972 that my father took me to watch Halifax Town for the first time. A game that saw Chesterfield come out 1-0 winners. It was one of three matches I saw during that season, the last being the final home game with Bournemouth, which happily Town won 2-0. The Shearmen were then embroiled in a relegation battle, which they would survive by winning their last match at Walsall three days later. But being only nine years of age, little did I understand or appreciate the circumstances at the time. I would of course come to get used to similar scenarios over the coming years, and generations before me had. Not for Halifax Town an endless tale of silverware or success, more a fight against the odds where survival had often been deemed a triumph in its own right. But for those who could help form the town's club back in 1911, none of the traumas that followed could have been foreseen. Such was the excitement back then. Halifax Town have had their moments of course, however fleeting, and many great players, either past stars or those of the future, have worn the club's colours. But with low crowds and usually no money, for most of the time the club's existence was one of struggle. Nevertheless, for those who embraced it, as I came to do, Halifax Town became a way of life. My own interest in the club extended itself to its history. From an early age, having initially kept my own statistics taken from old shoot magazines and Rothman football yearbooks, I have since trawled through the back copies of Halifax Courier, where reports of matches and news of Halifax Town's affairs were brought to us expertly by the likes of Tom T. Dickinson, Brackett's Pioneer, and Bill Carter. The Saturday Green final edition, which would hit the streets within an hour of the match finishing, provided in-depth coverage, in much the same way that FC Halifax Town's media team do today though it has to be said not quite as instant. All this information has helped build up a profile of the club and its players, and at long last this labour of love has manifested itself into the volume you have in your hands. Or in this case, I guess, the uh, volume you're listening to, if you take the time to listen to this book. The timing of this club's history is not accidental. The 100th anniversary of the formation of Halifax Town is an anniversary that deserves to be recognised. The publication thus encompasses the full 97 years of the original club and comes up to date following the formation of FC Halifax Town in 2008. Fittingly, it also coincides nicely with the success brought about by back-to-back -back promotions. Though very much a solo project, the offer is indebted to numerous people and organisations who have kindly helped with its production. First, I must thank Derby Books Publishing Company, and in particular Alex Morton, for backing me on the project. The FC Halifax Town Chairman David Bosomworth has also lent his support and kindly written up the foreword, and the efforts of the Halifax Town Supporters Club through Kit Walton and Andy Gilchrist, who gave up their time to promote the book, and it has been greatly appreciated. Many photographs appear within the book's pages, and for use of these I must thank the Halifax Courier, who have supplied the majority. For many years Keith Milton acted as the club's photographer and he has allowed me use of many photographs, as many photographs as I desired. Vicky Senior, Kelly Gilchrist, Stephen G and Massa Hyde, Tom Acose have also given permission for the use of photographs from their own collection. My thanks go to both George Mulhall and Jamie Patterson, both Halifax Town legends in their own right, for also contributing to the forewords and to Jack Hamer for his sterling work. Other former players and managers also gave up their time to offer information about their time with the club, and in particular I would like to thank Peter Ragg, John Carroll, Mick Rathbone, Alex South, George Holt and Lee Richardson. Secretaries past and present have also been other useful assistants. So may I thank Richard Groves and Angie Firth for their help, and to Hayley Horn who has provided the most recent necessary information. Most of my research has been done using the facilities at Halifax Central Library, I must also thank the staff at Bradford Library and Huddersfield Library, Peter Holm of the National Football Museum at Preston, and David Hansen at the Halifax Courier Library. There are others who have willingly or unwittingly offered information without whom my job would have been so much more difficult. So I would like to acknowledge the contributions of the following. Savi Aslam of Port Vale, Phil Ashworth, Sam Barnes, Keith Barrowclough, Richard, oh sorry, Roger Bottomley, Gavin Butler, Roy Carter, WRCFA, Richard Catton, Phil Chadwick, Witten Albion, Barry Chapman, Tim Clapham, Luke Couchman, Stuart Deans, Patrick Fissel, Simon Denton, Fergus Denton, Ian Ellis, Craig Ellison, Ben Fox, Andy Gallen, Bob Geffin, Michael Harker, Brackets Doncaster Rovers, 
Alan Jackson, Mick Jowett, Andy Kirkham, Nick Maiden, Ian Nanestad, Di Owen, Glyn Owen, David and, F David and Jill Pickles, Jord Probetz, Jack Ramsden, James Riley, Jess Sale, Gordon Sherlaw, Andrew Smith, Pete Smith, Terry Sunderland, Ned Vaunt of Bath City, Nigel and Janet Walker, and Brian Whelan of Dr Drogheda United. Not least, my eternal thanks must go to my long-suffering but understanding wife of Vaughn, who has found herself undertaking more household chores than she would care for while I've been compiling this book, without whom... Dot, dot, dot. Johnny Maynell, Halifax, June 2011.